Hello friends, welcome to Inside Cycle Initiative. In today's video, we are going to discuss about a topic that is India Employment Report 2024. This is our topic name. In this topic, we are going to discuss about following subtopics such as first we will try to understand the context why we are discussing this particular topic today. Then we will discuss about organizations involved in this report such as International Labour Organization and we will also discuss about IHD. So, regarding these organizations, when these organizations established and what are the objectives of these organizations. After that, we will discuss about 2024 report and its highlights. Then at the end of the video, we are going to discuss about Periodic Labour Force Survey PLFS 2023 and the important data related to PLFS. Okay. Finally, way forward. This particular data is going to be really helpful to you if you are appearing for prelims, UPSC prelims 2020 for this year or else if you are appearing for any other exams like Staff Selection Commission or RRB or any other kind of exams. Now, so first context. What is the context? The context is recently ILO, International Labour Organization along with Institute of Human Development, Institute of Human Development. HD, they jointly published a report. The name of the report is India Employment Report 2024. India Employment Report 2024. Okay, this is the first context. Now, let me explain some of the fundamental concepts which are required for effective understanding of this video. These concepts are in any economy, in any economy, okay, people who are willing to work, people who are willing to work, who are willing to work okay willing to work at the existing wages at existing wages that means whatever the wages they are getting existing wages this this people is known as what labor participation force labor participation force okay labor participation force means labor participation force rate it means percentage of population which is willing to work at the existing wages that is the labor participation force out of this labor participating force okay they are willing to work here yeah? few people may get the work and few people may not get the work people who got the work they are known as workers population workers population rate workers population rate that means these are the people who got employment who got employment and obviously, if you remove the WPR from LPFR, obviously you will get what? Unemployment rate. Unemployment rate. Okay. That means unemployed means people who are ready to work at the existing wages, but they are unable to find work. That is about the unemployment rate. Now, various reports, they give information related to these parameters. For example, okay. now in this video, we are going to discuss about unemployment unemployment rate unemployment rate in rural area as well as in the urban area and we will also discuss about labor force labor force participation rate labor part, labor force participation rate here labor force participation okay labor force participation labor force participation okay labor force participation lfpr LFPR labor force participation okay so how is the labor force participation and the male labor force participation as well as the female labor force participation how it is there then we have to discuss about the youth employment how is the youth employment and what are the challenges youth are facing in terms of employment so this data we are going to discuss in this particular video okay these concepts are very essential for better understanding of this video okay now let's see the report what is this report is all about so first before we discuss about report so this report is publishing by these two organizations first let us try to understand something about these two organizations ILO is an organization which was created in 1919 and we can say it was one of the oldest organization it was created as a part of treaty of Versailles, which was create which was made after world war one after world war one to create a, a kind of social justice across the globe because social justice will give ultimately the peace and prosperity to create the social justice which includes obviously recognizing the workers rights and giving decent amount of the wages to workers to fulfill all these kind of things 
this ILO came into existence. Main concept is social justice. And this ILO in 1946, it became the specialized agency of the UNO. It mainly promotes social justice and internationally recognized human and labor rights. Okay? And it also encourages various missions related to labor peace in international, international level. And the ILO headquarters mainly present in Geneva, Switzerland. You know that social justice is also one of the form of justice which our Indian constitution tried to achieve. You know that Indian constitution preamble, justice, various forms of justice, Indian preamble, you know, like aiming for social, political and economic justice. Tell me students, the concept of justice in the preamble, in the preamble of Indian constitution, we borrowed from which country? Next, objectives of ILO. Nowadays in prelims, these kind of questions are asking. Okay, ILO objectives, ILO promotes various standards as well as the fundamental principles related to a right, right set work. Various right set work. You know that article 45, okay, article 45, sorry, article 42. Article 42 which is present in the DPSP, it talks about the work life conditions and maternity relief as well. Then second one is to create greater opportunities for both men and women regarding the improved employment as well as the income and enhancing the coverage of social security and social protection to workers and strengthening the tripartism. Tripartism means the interaction between the employer, labor as well as the government. This three way communication is known as tripartism in terms of the you know like workers point of view. This ILO established when it was established, India was a founding member and at the moment ILO strength stood at 187 countries. Popular reports published by ILO, World Social Protection Report, Global Wage Report, World Employment and Social Outlook and World of Work Reports. These are the popular reports published by ILO. Next, Institute of Human Development, IHD. IHD was established in 1998 under the, under the umbrella of Indian Society of Labor Economics. The main aim of the, this particular IHD organization is building a society which, which further strengthens the values of inclusive social, economic and political system that is free from poverty and deprivation. That means to improve more inclusivity in the economy, I mean to promote the more inclusivity in the economy and political life and social life that is the main aim of this particular organization. It research, it undertakes research in the area of labor, employment, gender, health, education and various aspects of the human development. Now let's see India employment report, what are the key takeaway? Actually, this is not the first report. In 2024, they published a series of reports in that this is the third report. And this report is undertaken in partnership with the ILO, like I mentioned in the earlier. And this report examined various challenges youth are facing in the Indian employment setup. So this is saying that they took, uh, they took these observations mainly based on the data from the national sample survey as well as the periodic labor force survey from 20, 2000 to 2022 by using these two reports they arrived to such an, certain conclusions they are number one employment trends the female labor market participation rate initially it was declined in the earlier years after the covid then it is now taking upward especially in the rural areas that means in the rural areas more women are willing to work compared to previous times next one of the most significant feature is Indian labor market is showing slow and steady transition of the workforce away from the agriculture. That means Indian workforce, they are slowly moving away from the agriculture. That means the dependence of employment on the primary sector is reducing and they are moving away to other sectors like secondary as well as the tertiary sector. So any country, if it is going away from developing country towards the developed country, obviously the country's dependence of employment, it will move from primary sector to secondary sector and secondary sector to tertiary sector. This is how the economy will be, you know, like transitioned from one sector to another sector. Next, employment is majorly in India. It is about the self-employment and majority of the people, majority of the workforce, they are engaged in the unemployed, I mean, informal sector. Informal sector means the sector, the employment, which is not controlled by the rules and regulations and the employment which don't offer you know like uh, jobs i mean it's a kind of uh, social security like pf and insurance will not be available in the informal sector and the wage rates wage rates are more or less same 
it that much that not that much increasing and this report is also observing that migration level not captured properly but this report is saying that urbanization and migration it is going to be upward it is going to be increase in the coming days by 2030 around 40 percentage of the indian population they are going to they are going to migrate to the urban area that is going to be the around 6 60 crores around 60 crores of the population they are going to be in the urban cities by 2030 so this is indicating that we have to improve urban infrastructure a lot this is signifying and uh, of course this planned urban growth is in need of the hour if the planned urban growth is not there then what will happen the unplanned urban growth which results to occupation of the water bodies which results to flooding of the urban areas that's the biggest problem okay so we have to take this into consideration then challenges to youth employment and majority of the population who are in the working age now they are you know like uh, they are in the age of you know like uh, below 21 years and india can aim for the demographic dividend actually you know that demographic dividend means so getting the benefits because of the younger population so this report is saying that each year every year around uh, you know like 7 to 8 lakhs of the youth they are entering into the labor force so providing better opportunities is a very challenging task to governments and one more thing is some interesting development is now by that by the time of 2021 around 27 percentage of the population is youth by 2036 the percentage of the youth population it may drop to around 23 percentage that means youth population is going to be reduced by 2036 so it is the ideal time to capture this demographic dividend at the moment then youth participation in the labor market this report is saying that it may be reduced okay youth may not ready to work why because they are aiming for the higher education that is also one of the reason youth unemployment increased nearly almost all three times it was 5.7 percentage in 2000 now it is increased to almost all 17.5 percentage in 2019 later it declined to 12.1 percentage in 2022 so this is the these are the some of the challenges facing at the at the youth employment what are the suggesting the suggestions are promoting more job creations improves the we have to improve the employment quality address and we have to address the labor market inequality like uh, the inequalities between the men and women in the informal sector and certain other inequalities as well we have to we have to address and uh, even government of india and state governments also they have to mainly focus on strengthening of skills of the labor market because obviously whenever skills are upgraded then the chances of getting employment will be improved a lot now let's see periodic labor force survey plfs okay so first we have to know plfs works under which organization and what kind of data they, they gives let's see plfs works under national statistical office nso and this nso launched periodical this labor force survey plfs in 2017 plfs captures data related to employment unemployment and work population ratio labor force participation ratio and unemployment rate this definitions already explained actually plfs gives short term data as well as the long term data short term data is related to 3 months data and the short term report mainly related to the urban unemployment whereas the annual data it gives information regarding both urban as well as the rural unemployment next regarding the lfpr labor force participation rate labor force participation rate and workers participation rate and unemployment rate already so we have seen in the beginning of the video and the current weekly status current weekly status means when they are doing survey they will ask an individual so how long they are unemployed if a person is unemployed for last one week then that will be captured as current weekly status the survey is generally conducted by plfs survey is conducted by national sample survey which works under the ministry of statistics and program implementation next key findings of the plfs plfs is saying that labor force participation in the urban area it increased from 47.5 percentage in 2022 to 48.8 percentage that means more amount of the people they are ready to work then work part workers population rate in urban area it is increased from 43.9 percentage to 45.5 percentage that means number of people who are getting work that is increased for male this work population ratio increase rate increased from 68 to 69 percentage 
whereas for female it increased from 18 percentage to 21 percentage. So, these are the key findings of PLFS. The way forward is for better and more quality employment and to address the this you know like employment inequalities. So, we have to it is a need of the earth that government of India they have to come up with a very comprehensive national employment policy. So, this can address various issues related to employment as well as the unemployment. Now, let us see yesterday's video question. Which one of the following statements best reflect the issue with the Senkaku Islands sometimes mentioned in the news? Senkaku Islands, China and Japan both are engaging in maritime dispute over these islands in East China Sea. Now, let us see today's video question. Today's question is Saurabh was working as a tour manager with a tour and travels company. He lost his job due to cost cutting exercise by the company during the lockdown under the COVID pandemic. Saurabh is seasonally unemployed, structurally unemployed, cyclically unemployed and frictionally unemployed. What type of unemployment? Next main question. Most of the unemployment in India is structural in nature. Examine the methodology adapted to compute this kind of unemployment in the country and suggest improvements. This is today's main question. As we reach to the end of this video, in this video we mainly discussed about various fundamental concepts regarding the employment such as LFPR and WPR and unemployment rate. Then we discussed about unemployment, I mean employment report of this you know like international labor organization and IHF organization. After that we also discussed about the PLFS survey and survey report. This is the detailed analysis regarding the India's employment report which was published in recent times. Thanks for watching this video. Have a great day. Jai Hind.